Welcome back to our introduction to OpenMP, in which we teach OpenMP in small bytes. My name is Christian Terboven from RWTH Aachen University. In today's video, we are going to look at data scoping, which is dividing up the variables that are being used in, for example, a parallel region in your OpenMP program into the variables that are shared and those variables that are private. I tend to say that managing the data environment is one of the main challenges of OpenMP programming. And this is because if you get things wrong, you might end up in a, with a data race. A data race is tricky because the program's uh, result or output might become um, non-deterministic. And that means while you're developing your program, everything might look okay. But then later on, when it goes into production on an HPC server, you will see an error. Later on, we will talk about tools in order to find those errors, at least semi-automatically. So let's go back to scoping. Scoping in OpenMP means, as I just said, dividing variables up into those that are shared and those that have one or the other form of private. Shared means that whenever in a parallel region, one of a thread says A, assuming A is the name of a variable, and another thread also says A, meaning it works with this variable, then both threads are referring to the exactly same variable. So shared means that under for a certain variable with a given name, there's only one address, and that means all the threads in the parallel region have access to the same shared variable. Private means that when one thread says B and another thread also says B, in both cases, again, that means working, they work with the variable B, they both work with different variables because they are private, only visible to and accessible by the corresponding thread which owns the private variable. And in consequence, threads can work independently with private variables. There are a couple of rules that define how variables become private or shared. And then there are a couple of, uh, in particular, clauses that go and go onto OpenMP constructs that again might change the application of those standard rules. So for now, we are not going to take a look at OpenMP tasking, just considering parallel region and work sharing constructs. So on the parallel region, remember pragma on p parallel, or work sharing constructs, remember, for example, pragma on p parallel 4 or just pragma on p 4, you can add a private or a shared list clause. And that means if you say private A, the variable that's referenced to as A will be made a private variable. And that requires that this variable is already declared yeah, in the corresponding scope. In consequence, or similarly, if you put a variable named B onto a shared list, then this variable will become shared by all the threads in the parallel region or correspondingly the work sharing uh, construct. So the general default, that's my terminology, is shared for a parallel region. And that means everything that has been declared before the parallel region will be shared. That means it exists in, let us think of the main memory, and all threads have access to that. Everything that is declared within a parallel region, and this is this rule here, oh, sorry, this rule here, non-static variables local to a parallel region are private. So it means everything that you declare within a parallel region is private. You can think of the individual threads encountering this declaration and then making the variable private. However, that's not a technically correct explanation because at the end of the day, those variables declared within a parallel region are being instantiated on the thread execute on the thread stack uh, meaning the thread executing the parallel region. So everything before the parallel region is shared, every, declared before is shared, everything declared within a parallel region is private. And then there are some special cases. One, have we, uh, one of those we have con um, encountered already. Uh, so loop control variables on four constructs are private. Remember the vector addition example we looked at in the previous video um, episode. This is 
uh, important for correctness. So there we had i that iterates from 0 to 99, or actually in the real code from 0 to the dimension of the arrays. This has to be different for each thread because we were splitting up the iteration space among the team of threads in the parallel region. If two threads want to work with a variable and have different values at the same time, it's required that this variable is private for the sake of correctness because otherwise threads would each override their individual values. Shared means there's only one variable. Private means there's one per thread. Remember that. And let me add some more detail on private. So if, uh, as I said before, um, in most cases you do not specify the number of threads that uh, will be used at runtime as something hard-coded in your program. So that means the OpenMP runtime is dynamically creating the number of threads to be used based on the value of the OMP num threads environment variable. That means for each thread additional instances of a private variable have to have to be created. And uh, this is done at the time the thread is uh, being uh, existing and encounters the parallel region or the work sharing construct or whatever. And this private variable is uninitialized. That means the value of the, we call it the corresponding variable that uh, was declared before the parallel region, for example, is not being copied into the private instances. They are uninitialized. In a C++, in the case of a C++ object, that means a default constructor is called, but not a copy constructor. If you want to change it, then you can uh, replace, a, uh, instead of using the private clause, you can make use of the first private clause. And that means the private variable instance, in case of first private, will be initialized with the value of the corresponding variable from before the encountering of the construct. As I just said, in the case of C++ constructs, the copy constructor will be called. There's also last private. Admittedly, I've, uh, I think I never used it. And uh, that means if you want to write out the value of a variable from the last loop iteration in a, in a for work sharing construct back to the environment of the master or the initial thread, yeah? not the last one executed in terms of uh, the, in the parallel order, but in terms of the order defined by the sequential uh, program. Then you can make use of the last private uh, clause. And it means that the corresponding variable after the execution of, for example, the parallel region with the for work sharing construct contains the value of the last logical loop iteration. And another special thing, static variables are shared. So if you think about what a static variable is, it's really quite different from the ordinary variable, which um, we call it automatic storage location. That is a variable that you just declare within your program. So a static variable is initialized before actually main is executed, speaking of C and C++ programs here. And that means, again, in the case of a C, um, C++, data type, the constructor is called before main is encountered. And uh, in consequence, it's also destroyed after main has been exited. So if you want to carry this behavior over into the parallel world, we have again to do something special. And this is what we have OMP thread private for here illustrated with a simple integer. And that means as soon as an OpenMP thread is being created, a uh, thread private, meaning a private instance of such a static variable, is being created for each thread that the OpenMP runtime is being creating. And then this corresponding instance is being destroyed only when the OpenMP runtime is in a shutdown process and destroying the underlying system's native uh, threads. So this is really different from private, yeah? and you have to add this Pragma OMP thread private in the case of C to each um, position pro, uh, in your program, or I think the better word is occurrence in your program, where the static variable is being declared, for example, if it's a part of multiple compilation units. However, my advice is really try to avoid the use of thread private and in general static variables. There are some old books around 
um, saying that uh, static variables kind of lead to faster execution of your programs. I don't consider that true anymore. Thread private variables uh, cause a lot of problems when we think about correctness and uh, also static variables cause the same um, problems in terms of correctness. I don't have the time to go into much more detail here. There are some good use cases, for example, if you write your own allocator in C and C++. That means if you have to store some kind of data, some kind of information over multiple calls of a certain routine or an object or something like that. But in most cases, you really don't need that. With what we have just learned, let's go back to our, I called it bad scaling example. So I did, never explained that. We have a parallel four here, parallel region with a four work chain construct. But then the whole body of the four work chain construct just consists of the critical section. This ensures that our program summing up all the array elements of array A and storing the sum in this variable S is actually correct, but it doesn't scale at all. It doesn't get any faster at all. Because at each point in time, only one thread can be active, namely the one that is um, uh, successfully entered the critical sections. All the other threads will actively, meaning busy, wait at the entrance to the critical section. The problem is that S is a shared variable. And if there's only one S, when two threads simultaneously read it yeah, and write to it with potentially a different value, yeah, that depends actually on the values within A, then two threads will write different value to a single variable. One thread will go first, the other will go later. And in consequence, the thread that goes later will succeed in writing its value to this um, variable. However, the order of in, in, in which threads will actually be executed depends on the operating system scheduler, which doesn't have any clue about what our program is actually doing. And this is what I call, uh, refer to as non-deterministic behavior, because the result depends on the order of threads, which depends on the operating system uh, scheduler and other things going on in the machine um, which, on which your OpenMP program is being executed. So what can we do? Well, usually I ask the audience uh, to work on this code, which is not possible here. So there are many solutions and the one that I'm going to show now is not the best solution. I just want to illustrate the difference between a parallel, uh, between a shared and a private variable. So as I just said, this variable S is a shared variable. We could introduce what's a type of S, so we don't have that here. Let's assume it's an integer variable, we call it PS. This is a declaration and whoops, let me just say with initialize it with zero. So then we have a variable named PS, which is declared within the parallel region. And that means it, uh, its declaration is encountered by each individual thread. And as I just said, this means it's private, yeah, technically because it's a variable of automatic storage location. Now in the parallel computation, we do not work with S, but with PS. So that means each thread is executing uh, the parallel loop and writing to its own private instance. Yeah, we have to initialize it correctly because private variables are uninitialized. Yeah. And now each participating thread actually um, performs a partial sum. Yeah. So that means if we have multiple threads, we have multiple instances of these variables. I'm just illustrating this for four variables here. There's one instance of the PS variable for each participating thread. What we have to do at the very end is to say S equals s plus p s. So we have to update the variable s, yeah, which is expected to hold the result of the computation after the parallel region is completed with the partial sums, meaning with all individual contributions from the threads. However, the code like this would be not correct. 
And unluckily PS is not available after the parallel region anymore because it's only declared within this block that starts here and ends there. Yeah? So we have to actually guard this final update. Here we can say pragma OMP. Think about it. Critical. Make a curly brace before and a curly brace afterwards. Sorry, curly braces are not necessarily nice here when writing on the screen. So in terms of scalability, what is a different um, to the previous code? Well, the significant difference here is that the, yeah, assumingly uh, costly parallel computation, which takes long, uh, can be executed without any synchronization. And at the end of the day, the only synchronization consists of these um, integer additions. And we do that exactly um, as often as we have threads participating in the parallel region. If the dimension of the array would not be 99 or 100, but a couple of million, yeah, then the execution of the OMP4 would take a while. Think of the demo from the previous lecture. But the critical is just an integer addition, addition and it's really cheap. This is correct code and this will scale. However, this is quite ugly, I would believe. And uh, for cases like that, OpenMP has a built-in support. And this is, not a this is a special operation that's well known in, in parallel computer science. We call that a uh, reduction. And uh, this is a clause. The reduction clause is a clause that can be specified um, uh, at several places in OpenMP. For now, we know only about the four work chain construct. We specify it with an operator and a list of variables. Here, the operator is plus and the list of contains only the variable s. So the idea of the reduction operator is pretty much the same as what we just did. So it will cause the um, Compiler plus the runtime, meaning together the OpenMP implementation, create a private variable s for each participating thread. We call it ps. Use that during the parallel computation and um, take then all the partial results and apply the reduction operator to merge them together. In this case, s will be um, yeah, added up, as we just explained. It also performs the initialization, and by default, it initializes, initializes with a, we call it the neutral value. So for the addition, yeah, the neutral value is the uh, element zero. So the reduction operation also makes sure our code is correct. And in addition, it expresses additional information so the compiler can understand what we want it to do. And in consequence, hopefully, optimize our code with respect to cache usage, um, the right mix of instructions, and so on. Yeah? So let me be clear here. I would always recommend to use a reduction clause and never do the manual optimization or the manual correction of the program that I uh, illustrated on the previous slide. I only did that to illustrate the difference between private and shared variables. So sometimes it helps to say the same thing again in different uh, words. So this is a, my summary of a reduction. Here we have a parallel region, an OMP4 with a reduction on variable A, and we are adding up uh, the numbers from zero to uh, including 99 uh, into the variable A. A is declared here, so that means at the beginning, A is a variable within the memory of the initial thread. Then we have a parallel region, and we assume we have four threads here. There will be a new instance of A um, initialized with a neutral element with respect to the addition operation, one new instance for each participating thread. They work with their local copies and come up with partial results, which I just uh, try to illustrate here. And then the reduction clause ensures that the final sum is being created uh, being computed and the update is written to the shared variable, which is the original variable in our program.